Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world joining us today. Um, on behalf of the British Council, thank you for tuning in to a continued webinar series for the Destination Zero campaign. Uh, what you'll be tuning in today is some tips and tricks on best practice on social media engagement and how you can best use social media to not only spread your climate change message, um, but also speaking with Megan Bickerstaff who was a digital marketing and social media expert. Megan, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good afternoon, actually, to you in London. <laughs> thank you for having me. So before we get into today's conversation and start chatting, a reminder of Destination Zero uh, is a global campaign on behalf of the British Council that we are running to basically challenge the current status of the climate conversation and create a platform um, for users all over the world and people who are engineers, change makers, innovators, technologists, anybody who has an idea either in market or in motion to help currently tackle and challenge the climate crisis. The campaign runs until... For, uh, Sunday, February 14th. Um, we are asking that you submit your proposal in 60 seconds on social media using the hashtag Destination Zero. Uh, and basically, it can be on Twitter, it can be on Instagram, it can be on Facebook, or on YouTube. Um, but really quickly, before we get into today's conversation, speaking with Megan about how you can optimize your social media message and amplify your message, we're going to play a quick video that explains exactly how the campaign works, what you have to do, and basically who we're looking for and why we need you. So we'll go ahead and play that video and then we'll get in to our conversation today with Megan. We are calling all the innovators, thinkers, makers, and doers out there that want to make a difference to climate change. We know that sometimes not all voices are equally heard and we want to provide a platform a forum where your voice and your ideas can be heard, seen, and brought to life. Welcome to Destination Zero, an innovation challenge powered by the British Council, where we invite you to share your ideas and innovations on how to tackle the climate crisis. Great ideas come from anywhere and from anyone, but we are specifically calling on those places sometimes overlooked in the climate conversation. When it comes to climate change, we all share a unified path, fate, and ambition. The conversation should be no less equal. To enter the challenge, please share a 60-second video with the hashtag Destination Zero on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And be sure to state your first name, age, and where you're from. Then explain your innovation. Whether it is to help your local community or a larger global idea or initiative, we want to hear from you. Improving upon processes such as farming, transport, or completely disrupting new or old technologies, nothing is too big or small to share. The challenge runs from the 25th January to the 14th February, but we encourage you to submit as soon as possible. On the 1st of March, we, with the help of a global panel of judges and experts, will announce the top 20 candidates and submissions who will be invited to share further information about their concepts. From there, we will select the 10 finalists with the best proposals and offer a five-month mentorship and financial support in the form of £5,000 to help bring their idea or innovation to life. Don't forget to submit your video by the 14th February 2021 tagged with Destination Zero. Once submitted, stay tuned. Destination Zero, a climate crisis innovation challenge powered by the British Council, putting faces to the places at the core of the climate change conversation. One world, one goal, infinite possibilities. Exciting. And um, we've already seen some submissions come in, um, a lot from Africa, um, already on Twitter and on Facebook. And we're really excited to see more come in. So please, please, please uh, make sure if you haven't, you still have time next Sunday on February 14th to submit your entries. And today's conversation and why we're talking today is we're talking with Megan Bickerstaff, who, Megan, you are a expert, a veteran, a, I guess, an ingenue in the digital marketing industry. You've, I, I've, I'm also, I, on behalf of British Council, I work in digital. So I think this would be a, an amazing conversation. Your background 
it's everything from digital, influencers, everything. So I guess to, to start out, a, a two-pronged question for you. So tell us about yourself. Um, tell us basically how you got to where you're at today. Did you always want to work in digital and social? Uh, how, what's your journey? How did, you, how did you get into digital marketing and social media and, and being an expert that you are today? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I guess I started out, I just really love social, actually. Um, so I've been working in, in digital marketing for about a decade now. Um, and in the beginning, I, you know, started uh, like a PR and advertising major at school. And but then was just really passionate about at that time it was like Twitter and blogging. Um, so I, you know, my experience is, is across a lot of different areas within digital, but I would say I'm, I have a lot of in-depth experience with social, both from a marketer's perspective, working with like large brands like Mercedes, Rimmel, Marc Jacobs, but mm -hmm. also from a personal perspective, um, I started my own parenting blog, which became quite popular. I won like a Reader's Choice Award, and then I turned this blog into a community of mm -hmm. around a thousand parents um, and then it just kind of grew from there and then I also um, launched my own influencer marketing agency um, where I built a community again to 2,000 influencers so wow. yeah I've kind of had a lot of experience like in social from a personal perspective and marketers perspective and you know growing communities because actually I think social is all about being a part of a community and you know amplifying messages that are you know, that you're passionate about so mm -hmm. yeah. now that's it's incredible isn't it? i i think the the concept of community and we'll, we'll really dive into that i think a little bit more in this session today and the fact that um i think this leads into the next question really really nicely is the fact that i feel like you know back in the day 10 or 15 years ago when social media was kind of in its infancy and it was just you know facebook and twitter it was kind of like everybody was in one big community and now as the as there's more platforms and you know the conversation becomes a little bit more global uh, you know i feel like it kind of there's more communities out there and you kind of have to find your tribe and it's interesting though because i think that's true within climate change but i think the climate change conversation is so big and it's so vast and everybody's so switched into it but now i think there's a lot of you know sub communities to it that are really interesting uh, different geographies are struggling you know with different parts of the climate crisis so it's just interesting how the concept of community and even under the guise of climate change, how that's different. I think, and that leads into the next question I have for you is, I guess, in terms of judging from when you started in digital and started in social, what's, what's I guess, what's changed in your opinion? I guess, what what doesn't work that used to work, I guess, in terms of how brands engage social? Um, they said that used kind of work doesn't work so much anymore. Um, and actually, what are some things that basically were true back in the day that, you know, to be successful and to be, you know, I guess, gets to, to have resonance on social, uh, what still works, you know, so what's kind of not so cool anymore, and I guess, and what is still kind of a really good principle to follow that brands or people should still follow to be successful in social based on how long you've been in the industry? Yeah, it's, it has crazy in the last 10 years, like it's changed a lot. And I feel like it's become more of like a commodity now, like there's marketplaces for people who you know, are using social media and they can make money off of social media. And then also from a marketer's perspective, you can run ads across all of the different platforms. It's almost mm -hmm. like a marketplace. But I think in the beginning, yeah, it started with blogging. And then um, and then I think Google actually came out with the first like product to monetize the, the blogging platform so that bloggers can make money from it. Um, but I think what what really changed when once like Twitter and Facebook launched, it was like this idea that it really gave a voice to people who didn't have one. So it was like giving real people a voice. And then off the back of that, it was like social became the place where movements began. Like, you know, Me Too and Black Lives Matter and climate change has been such a big one. Um, so yeah, I think what's changed is obviously it's become much more mature and you can use it to monetize, you know, your personally or from a marketer's perspective, but then also you're able to use it to yeah, amplify these really important messages and mm -hmm. create communities. So, um, I, you know, built these two different communities off of social and that was literally just connecting with people, engaging with them in a meaningful way. And then like creating like these private communities. So I think there's so much that you can do. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then I think one of the things that like didn't, that used to be important, but now isn't as important is um, like follower account. I think like both brands and also influencers or bloggers were really obsessed with, you know, getting a really big fan base. Mm -hmm. And actually I think now it's not necessarily as important, although it's great because it will give you lots of traction. But I think sometimes like the quality of the people that you are, that are following you is more important than having like tens of thousands of people who follow you, but don't really care about what you're saying and aren't necessarily that passionate about it. If you have like a, you know, group of 200 people that are like really passionate, really relevant, mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about and then they will like spread the word about your message. I feel like that can be so much more powerful than having, you know, Oh, I have like a million followers or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, that's so true, isn't it? It's, and then that's been, I think one of the really cool things, the shift is how, you know, it used to be macro influencers and look how many followers I have. And actually, you know, now it is more kind of these smaller communities where someone with 50,000 or 20,000 or even a thousand can be just as, I guess, impactful. And it's, um, you know, I think that's an important reminder for this competition for Destination Zero is there are a lot of climate change influencers out there. There's a lot of people, you know, Greta Thunberg, you know, there's also other kind of more local, you know, I guess there's, there's the climate change cool kids is what you could say and I think a reminder for everybody watching this is you don't have to have you know 15 20 30 thousand you don't have to be Greta Thunberg to to enter this competition or to make a difference about climate change and I think that is one of the best cool things about where the market has kind of headed um and where it's going I think something that you know the the mock cop 26 that happened earlier this February where um a huge group of 300 uh, you know younger gen z uh teenagers and younger adults held their own cop 26 forum all virtually and some of them were micro influencers and you know very very powerful in their own right but a lot of people were just you know up and coming and you know kind of just getting started so i think that that all kind of captures the sentiment of what we're looking for with this campaign leading into the next question and we talked with uh, lisa armstrong in the last webinar which you can watch um across other british council uh, facebook pages as well so look for webinar one uh but in webinar one with lisa we talked about selling your idea in the in the basically making the perfect pitch so i guess the kind of the lens for you as a social media marketer. So when you're trying to spread a message or when you're trying to get people rallied behind your cause or basically to kind of translate that message in social, especially when you only have 60 seconds to convey an idea, um, I guess, what's the process or what are, what are some of those reminders? And we have some tips and, and, and kind of top tips from you coming out later this week, but what are some of those things that when you have an idea, um, you know, when you want to get people behind you, what's really important to remember to make sure that your vision and the way it translates on social media comes across as authentic and empowering? Yeah, definitely. So I think actually this is quite similar to what Lisa said, which is even in social, I think translating that message is still, it still needs to be really authentic and personal and also telling a story because those things also work really well in social. But then if you're thinking about, you know, like the different platforms and the ways that you should be using those, those, you know, videos or images there are like some some rules for each of the platforms like with instagram the instagram feed you have to have like you know a really beautiful visual aesthetic whereas like with uh reels or stories you want to make it really snappy and make sure that you get your message in the first like three seconds you make mm -hmm. it really interesting the first three seconds so that they'll want to continue to watch i think that's similar for facebook too but um I think also there's like all of these kind of social media rules that you should follow. But I think at the same time, it's just making sure that you still stay true to who you are and like what your, your voice is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, you know, engaging with people who, again, who are, who are very relevant to what you care about, like is going to be the most like important thing in order for you to grow your community so if you're engaging with them in like a meaningful way like genuinely wanting to know how they're doing and mm -hmm. like sending them a dm like that makes such a difference because they'll remember you and then they'll engage back with you so i think those are some things to think about and then also like your hashtag the hashtags that you're using mm -hmm. there's like tools like hashtagify that you can use to find like what's trending and then you kind of you know just alter your hashtags to be similar to what's trending. But I think also don't get like stuck on having like perfect 
like <laughs> the, the right and the perfect number of like hashtags, but just yeah. focusing on like the key ones, like two or three that are really important, I think are, are helpful. Yeah, no, and it's, and actually this is a good reminder. So for everybody watching this and who's thinking about submitting a destination zero submission, 60 second video, I mean, yes, being creative and being clever, maybe adding some music, that's great. And, you know, we will look into that when we're judging, of course, we will be selecting a top 20 initially on March 5th. And in that judging process, yes, creativity is, uh, you know, is factored into that. Um, but, you know, things like having huge follower accounts or, you know, getting lots of likes and shares, sure, and spreading that message is important. But I think what we're really looking forward to or what we're looking for out of submissions and as a reminder for everybody is just great ideas great impactful ideas um, that just resonate and whether it's with your local community something that you've ever done you know in the town the village the city that you're from um, or you know if it's just a really great idea that you've had that need more funding for so yes being clever and being great uh, you know and kind of you know, spreading the message and getting people to like and share your idea and video for your destination zero submission is important. Um, but it's, I think, most important um, that your idea is practical. And I think that it's, you know, really addresses a, you know, the a concern in this kind of complex discussion of climate change. Um, so I guess the next question, and you know, you've worked with so many brands, you know, like like you were saying, huge brands like Marc Jacobs and Mercedes and loads of charities and startups. You've kind of worked across the board. Um, who I guess if people are looking for some inspiration, if they're looking for some ideas, either of brands that you've worked with or brands that you just like or admire and think are doing it really well, who are some maybe, I don't know, some examples that come off the top of your head of just brands that are doing the things that you talk about really well, about, you know, fostering community, um, you know, creating, you know, kind of, I guess, content that resonates and that's real and still feels kind of trending, you know, kind of on the pulse of conversation. Do you have some examples of those brands, either, like I said, the ones you've worked with or just ones that you think are really great that people can maybe look to when they're they're crafting their destination zero submission? Um, yeah, so I actually have like two examples. So with a, with a brand, um, this is really surprising, but uh, National Geographic, they yeah. are the second most followed Instagram account and that's second to Instagram itself. Um, and you wouldn't really, you wouldn't necessarily think that they would be, popular, but they really are. And it's because of the fact that they are, they have really unique and authentic content. So mm -hmm. um, they actually have their photographers write their own stories for each of the photos and the videos. Um, and it just comes again, storytelling, their authentic, really unique content. And it just does, it does so well. And they have a huge audience. Um, and they've also partnered with other people like for World Water Day, they did a partnership that, you know, generated ridiculous, like 11 million impressions. So I think another thing is thinking about like people that you could partner with to help amplify your message. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you've mentioned earlier, but like Greta Thunberg, like I know she's not a brand, but she's, she's basically an influencer now and has become mm -hmm. like the voice of climate change. And actually like her story is really interesting because she uh she still was obviously like a 12 year old girl mm -hmm. and she was just posting like dog photos and photos of nature and then she started to, she went to this like climate strike uh didn't go to school started this like hashtag that was like future for fridays which became really popular and then the first thing that really kind of amplified her message was actually this like entrepreneur and environmental activist who believed in her cause and then shared mm -hmm. her content on his channels. And then again, it kind of spread from there. There was like this head of um, banking finance in Sweden that had 200,000 fans and she shared her message. So I feel like using your communities is really powerful because you can get them to spread your message mm -hmm. because you might not have a huge following you can you know partner with people and then it would just continue to grow and now she's become this huge like voice for yeah voice for climate change which is insane so i think even like looking at some of her content could be a good like source of inspiration as well yeah, that's such a shot. I love the National Geographic example. Such a kind of like um, the, the, Nat Geo. Granted, I think the photography is, is 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 maybe a little bit more stunning. But it's kind of like uh, GE, like General Electric. How you know that it's washing machines and dishwashers, but you know the captions and the science behind the products, and you know it it tells a story. Uh, but Nat Geo is such a good one. Um, but yeah, I think but but you know Greta Thunberg, and you know a lot of other you know I guess more emerging you know I guess climate change influencers and activists. 
this. You know, to your point, it doesn't have to be super polished. It doesn't have to be, you know, it looks like, you know, it's in a, in a magazine, you know, it just has to, you know, just tell a good story. And I think that everybody can relate to. I think, you know, the reality is, you know, regardless, you know, the, the differences and impact of climate change can be different, whether you live on a coastal city, you live on more of a desert plain. But I think the reality is, you know, we're kind of all in together. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, you tell your story because I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, you know, and I think that, yeah, it's, it's just all oh, that's so, so important to remember. Um, I guess the next question, and I hate putting you on the spot like this because it's, it's more of a, it's like a math question. Um, so I guess if if we had to come up with a formula, um, so I guess I'm looking for for two words or two constructs here. So the the formula would be blank plus blank equals true engagement. So what are those what are those two factors or what are the two kind of it things in your opinion that people should have if you want a, a piece of content or something on social that's truly engaging? What are what are those two kind of you know, je ne sais quoi, the, the you know, the, those it factors that you have to, to make up that equation. What's the fill in the blank? <laughs> um, I think, I think we've said it actually, but like, you know, authenticity plus like storytelling, I think equals true engagement. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. I, and I think that's, you know, it's, it's important. I think sometimes, and even though it's, you know, a linear equation, sometimes, you know, what's most impactful is it's right in front of you. You know, it doesn't have to be overdone, overthought. And, you know, some of the best ideas are right on the tip of your tongue or, you know, right on the, you know, the top of your head. And, it, it's, you know, as long as you, if you can just get them out, you know, and just say them, you know, I think a lot of people would be surprised how, how much it resonates with other people. So again, as a reminder for your Destination Zero submissions for anybody that's watching this, um, you know, again, don't, doesn't have to be, you know, beautiful and amazing or, you know, anything that, you know, you think is global. It can be something, you know, that you've, you know, done or seen in your village or your town that works. So, you know, again, I think all this is a reminder, don't let that discourage you and submit, submit, submit. Um, so we're going to kind of get start wrapping this up um, and kind of close this chat out of it today. And then we, we kind of asked Lisa the same thing um, to kind of wrap this up. So I guess if you could only pick three, um, I guess, what are, what are three tips or just, I guess, social media essentials to remember when you're engaging or activating an idea or a campaign on social media. If, if you, I mean, I'm sure you could write a book on this with how much experience you have, but if you only could pick three, um, what are those three important things to remember when, when you know, creating or launching an idea on social media? Um, yeah, so there's a lot, but yeah, okay. So three is, so number one, you know, the main goal of the content should be about triggering emotions and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And then two, I think, you know, don't forget like the power of building communities uh, and, and partnering with people who are relevant to you. It doesn't necessarily need to be an influencer, but somebody that genuinely cares about the same topic you care about. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about earlier, like micro communities are becoming such a big thing now because there's so many people on social media. Yeah. Um, and then three, I think le leveraging new features and tools that the platforms come out with. So for instance, like when Reels came out, mm -hmm. being one of the first people to be using Reels, the platforms tend to increase engagement on the new tools that they launch with. So I think, you know, being the first people to start using them and learning from them is is another another good one. Amazing. Um and I am gonna and apologies, just I'm I'm gonna spring a, a surprise question on you just, just just because it's it's interesting. And I guess, you know, I, to put it again through a social media lens, um, I guess knowing what you know about the power of social and how powerful social media can be and how many of these movements, um, you know, whether it's you know Fridays for Future or Black Lives Matter or any of these things. How do you hope, or I guess this is more of an open-ended question, what's your hope, I guess, for the world and climate change, the next generation that is really active and doing some incredible things? What is your hope in how social media could could maybe solve the climate crisis? What do you, what do you hope to see in maybe the next 10, 15, 20 years as we approach, you know, 2050, 2016, some of these really scary headlines about, you know, if we don't, you know, reverse course and change and get zero emissions, zero waste, we might not be able to come back. But what what's your hope? and how social media might be able to fix or, you know, I guess change, you know, the climate crisis. Yeah, I think like there's, 
I really, you, I mean, we've all seen like the impact that social can have, like it really has changed the way people think about these movements. Like it's changed the way people think about black, the content set, you know, last year that we saw from George Floyd, like that was just, that's created so much noise and so much change in people's minds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible, like it's incredible. So I really think that, I hope that over the next 10 years, that we can continue to amplify these messages about climate change. And I think there's so many people out there that are doing it, but I think the more that we all can talk about it as a community, like we're better together. So I think the more, more and more people that can talk about it on social media, it will just continue to increase this change in the way that we think about, you know, the way that people, well, you know, personally, I'm trying to make changes at home, but then, we want to get it to a point where the government starts making the changes as well. Mm -hmm. So we're still not there, but I think if more and more people kind of join this cause and start talking about it on social, I think we can get there. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Amen to all that. And I think that, you know, that that's the moral of, of, of today and the moral of destination zero as a campaign is let, let your voice be heard um you know and if you have an idea say it you don't have to be an influencer and you don't have to be from some big city because the reality is, is that you know climate change and the climate crisis is actually the areas in the regions of the world that it's going to most impact are from a lot of those places that are overlooked and that's why we've started destination zero that's why we're using it as a platform is for those faces in the places that might be getting overlooked so so spread the word spread the word uh, create your 60 second video um, using the hashtag destination zero and explaining in 60 seconds what your climate change idea or innovation is. Um, you have until Sunday, February 14th to submit that. Uh, and like I said, we, we want to see your videos. We want to see everything. And then from there, of course, we'll be selecting the top 20 finalists um, who are eligible for future mentoring and possibly 5,000 pounds each for their ideas to help bring those ideas to life. So um, it starts with you guys. It starts with everybody. And um, it's, yeah, it's it's an exciting time. It's I think there's a lot to be done um, and there's a lot of work to do. But I, from knowing and kind of seeing what we've seen with this younger generation, and the audience for generation or destination zero. Um, I, I have confidence that we can get there, but Megan, thank you for your time today. You were a wealth of knowledge and um, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hope everything goes well. It's so exciting. <laughs> Thanks guys, submit, submit, submit. <laughs>